Welcome back to the coverage of the Remote Duo TCG Invitational. We are finally back with a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! match for you guys. Uh, and uh, if you follow the, with attention the bracket, we will not be finding out uh, who the opponent uh, will be uh, right away for the last top 8 match. Uh, but we will stand the go to the other half of the bracket for a different top 16 match. Uh, but just as exciting, and it will be the one between Mattia and Maren. So we already talked about Maren, and now he was a fellow commentator during the YCS a few weeks back, but now he's back where he started, uh, competing at these remote dual uh, invitationals. He had uh, quite some success, I would say, yeah, right? Actually, he showed up uh, one of our remote dual invitational. how strong the Eldritch deck was at that yeah. time with all the traps and... Uh, he basically smashed all his opponents at that time winning the tournament, so... Yeah, and now he's uh, again uh, trying his best, he qualified uh, for this event, uh, but he will be the first player this weekend uh, we see with Drytron in action. He was actually doing out a meta discussion, one of the decks we uh, really looking uh, forward to see, and uh, one that we will see how it will adapt uh, with the new Forbidden Limited list, uh, in particular with the uh, Eva going to one. He is playing two copies. So we'll see how that will affect his uh, starting uh, combos. But his opponent uh, is uh, Mattia Bilotti, uh, another Italian player, who is playing uh, more of a standard deck, and that is uh, Zodiac uh, Tri Brigade. Yeah, no surprise here from Mattia, who is main deck in 12 M traps. So something yep. that we are used to seeing with the Tri Brigade monster. But uh, on the other hand, he's facing Drytron, which is not super easy to deal with. Because uh, absolutely, we we know that that is a very very annoying deck, and uh, it's even one that is not super straightforward to play sometimes. So we'll see how well Mattia prepare for this specific matchup. But as always, I would say let's hear it from they themselves. So let's bring up the first player interview for you guys. Uh, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for six years now, uh, since the 2015 uh, in the Necros format, uh, but I started playing uh, competitively in 2017 in Zodiac format. Uh, I don't really watch the anime, but my favorite character is uh, Yugi Muto for his uh, motivation and believing in the heart of the cards. I'm really excited for Master Duel, for Master Duel because we can have like uh, an official uh, website uh, or platform where to test decks. Um, I think dragons uh, in general, like the Dragon Link deck, uh, because it had uh, a lot of combos and different ways to play it. Um, probably something like a spell that says discard one as cost and draw two, like a better upstart, but uh, with the risk of getting hit with an Ash Blossom. Great stuff from Mattia, and uh, as we mentioned, he's one of the four Italian players competing this weekend. Two out of two already advanced to the top eight, so we'll see if uh, a third one uh, will actually do it, or if Maren will stop him. But before going to the match, uh, let's hear it from uh, Maren himself. So. Uh, so I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! around eight years ago. I uh, still remember the uh, Duelist Online sneak peek, uh, which was basically when I started playing competitively. I uh, still have some memories of the Dragon Rulers, but I've never really played with them before. But yeah, I uh, have been playing for eight years now, and I've basically seen uh, all the newest formats and all the newest Master Rules coming out. My favorite character from the anime is one that he's only been see like seen for a couple of seconds, which is the uh, Zodiac Hammer Kong. When he made an appearance, it uh, really made me happy because it uh, finally connected the modern game to the uh, anime. I am very excited for Master Duel. I think that this has so much in store for the players, for the content creators, for everyone. And I am really looking forward to a, a bright future with the platform. Really looking forward to playing that. Over all the eight years that I have been playing, the archetype, the, the team that I've had the most fun with, I really like shuttles. I really like how they flow. And I feel like... So, sometimes people don't really agree with this, but I feel like the upgrade from Shuttles was Thunder Dragon. They kind of have the same flow, but then more easy. And I always, always liked Chaos since I started playing. Of course, we all have the uh, Dark Magician of Chaos and the Black Cluster Soldier. But I, I really think that Thunder Dragon, really, that's what the deck did for me. Right? If I could create any card, um, 
it, it may be a little bit too good, but it would be a um, Thunder Link 1 uh, that you can only make with Thunder Dragons, and when it's on the field, um, it will probably have around 2600 attack. When it would be destroyed by a battle or card effects, you can banish a Thunder from your grave instead. And when he's on the field, your opponent cannot add cards from their, to their hand. Definitely a character, and uh, we'll see if we will do as much of a good job uh, playing uh, as he did uh, uh, doing commentary uh, for the YCS. But either way, as we mentioned, it will be quite an exciting uh, matchup for you guys. And uh, we will find out who will be the one and first to advance to the top eight in the right side uh, of the bracket. So once again, as a final reminder, it's gonna be Drytron from Maren against uh, the Zodiac Tri Brigade deck from Mattia. And I say, if our players are ready, we can just go to the table and find out. All right, so what do you think of this matchup in general? Um, actually, we haven't seen uh, a lot of players relying on Drayton lately, but we did, uh, I think, a good discussion on uh, the meta decks actually at the moment, and a lot of players uh, are actually relying on Drayton instead. And uh, I really like the fact that this deck, as you mentioned earlier, uh, is not super standard in the combos, especially because like you have so many different options while starting things off. And uh, you can actually rely on different combos. So if Mattia is not super prepared enough for this kind of matchup, it will not be super easy. I think Maren has a lot of experience from his side. So I think uh, before hands are being picked up, I would give a slight advantage to Maren just because uh, like, he, he is already familiar with the Remodual Invitational. And yeah. uh, I think he's prepared enough for the Dry Brigade matchup. But here, the die roll, I think uh, it will maybe be Yeah, it could make a uh, big difference, honestly. Yeah. Drytron is uh, really annoying to be dealing with, and uh, maybe if you haven't played too much ag or against it, uh, using your hand uh, correctly, it's uh, tough. To the pyramid uh, draw. <laughs> so, let's see. It might be Mattia who goes first by the yeah. gesture, so... Yeah, and he does. Okay, great way to start things off with a part of Desires. Uh, his decklist seems really standard, nothing out of the ordinary. I would say just the one copy of Ram Ram. It's something yeah. we haven't seen yet. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't change uh, the concept, I guess. Looks like Maren doesn't have the Ash Blossom here, so two new cards for Mattia. Yeah. Okay, so we see the decent Al Mirage start uh, probably trying to just get the Keras uh, at the end to uh, try and overextend okay seems like for now he will forego it so he will just uh, put uh, as many monsters as he can in the grave maybe with Kit as well yeah uh, so there are two possible options here. One is that he has the Keras plus an additional monster, or maybe he just has the Revolt, and he will just set a few back rows and uh, have a slower start. Let's see. Maren definitely opening the second, and that is the case. So kind of a slow start from Mattia, but three face down cards. Wow. Yeah. So interesting start. We know that those could be an Imperial Order, for example, yeah. <laughs> shaking the game. Uh, so let's see how Maren uh, decides to come back from this opening. Uh, definitely an unusual one. Yeah. yeah, this might seem like a say slow start, but with three face up, face down cards, uh, it's not super easy for Maren. Yeah. So we start with some dry turns. Uh, Mattia um, probably unsure whether he's happy or not about uh, this being the deck from his opponent. And we'll try his best to just capitalize on the drop cards, yes. So we see a Cyber Angel. I'm curious to see here now how Moren uh, uh, will deal with the, the face down cards for Matthias Sago. Okay. okay, I was about to say if you don't add the Ben 10, you already yeah. have it. And uh, this is a solid start for sure. Uh, we, we already saw how Ben 10 is powerful in this deck. and. Uh, one of the tools uh, 
which is the Fafnir in the extra deck is just uh, so so strong so let's see and he even gets the herald of the orange light uh, which can prevent uh, the omen of course that's really the case because of the chain links but it can also avoid just an entrap in general so for now solid uh, stuff by Maren okay okay Nova let's see if Mattia yeah. has the imperial order but no okay. no so maybe it's just a couple of impermanents uh... He's also playing uh, Forbidden Droplet, uh, which we might have set. So, good stuff from Aren here. Uh, yeah, solid, uh, solid Yu-Gi-Oh here. Yeah, now I think the first thing he needs to go think of is the Revolt, right? He has the Orange Light, so I think uh, from this point of view, he's safe in a certain. Yeah, way. not too much, but he needs to find a way to still get rid of the Omen. Uh... And for now, we will go into Linkuribo. And probably... Uh, yeah, still Link Summon. He's playing the mm. Phoenix. So now... Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of asleep. But yeah, now that he has the Phoenix uh, that is co-linked, he can actually try and uh, fish uh, for a draw. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter what he eats. Yeah. Uh, I guess the impermanence could come down. Yeah, if he's impermanence, then that would be good. Yeah, if it's the revolt, uh, uh, he gets a free draw, which mm. is decent. So Mattia will have uh, somewhat of a decision here. I think Mattia now is thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think it's great to revolt here, but okay. yeah, he, he does go for the impermanence. Uh, this, however, gives uh, Maren the option to just go for Unicorn and do the same. And this way he forces out the Omen, but... Let's see. He has a lot, a lot of options still. Ooh, what opening. <laughs> so he's still a uh, normal summon, one of the best uh, cards in the deck, uh, which is the Diviner of the Herald. So a lot of advantages. Yeah. Now... This might change the, the entire turn. And now, okay, Mattia goes for the revolt. Uh, looks like... Uh, oh no, he didn't activate it. Did he? No, because with the... The entity... He actually destroyed the revolt, but uh, there were no response for yeah. Mattia's side. So now he's free to continue his combo. And... Uh... I mean, in actual deck, he has quite a few options. Uh, he has even the Bottles Ward uh, to just try and go for game right away. So, uh, definitely a solid opening uh, by Maren here. Playing uh, pretty well. You think he has a second copy? Like, uh, if he didn't activate... Maybe. Now we see the Unicorn forcing it out. So, not much of a decision left uh, from Mattia. And yeah. yeah, as expected, he just uses the second copy. So definitely a weird opening from Mattia. We will just uh, now go for the Omen. Uh, Maren, uh, I guess saw this coming, I would say. It seemed like he was uh, pretty confident about his plays and uh, I would be surprised if he didn't uh, play around this Omen, so... Yeah, he's just gonna order his chain links so that Kit is chain link free. And this way he can resolve everything uh, smoothly. It looks like Maren knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he is impressed by this revolt. I think you might have expected it after uh, you know Mattia didn't activate the first one. Uh, now the omen is going to resolve. Yeah, banishes the unicorn. Uh, I think Maren still has some. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we know that the second or... angel was yeah. there. So now we can. Uh... Still continues his combo, and the Fafnir, uh, if there is not an end trap uh, from his opponent, uh, is a beast. Okay, here comes yeah. the Fafnir, yeah. Yeah, I think Maren uh, knew what he was doing. Like, uh, uh, if Mattia doesn't have any end trap, like Ash Blossom or something, I believe that Maren can actually deal some damage here and get rid of uh, Mattia's field. Absolutely, so 
I mean, we, we said how, how strong the card is, and uh, we will try to bring it up for you guys on the screen. Uh. I mean, I like the fact that Maren played knowing that what was coming, because, like, if you don't expect your opponent having a cycle copy or revolt, it's fine, but at that point, I mean, once Mattia didn't activate the first one, I think uh, you start thinking about it. So, now with the Fafnir... Uh, if Mattia doesn't have any other response to this, uh, looking good for Maren. Mm -hmm. Last card, the ritual spell uh, would be yeah, <laughs> uh, nail in the coffin, but let's see. Definitely doing some uh, calculations. Uh, on one end, I'm surprised that he's taking so much time as he was playing really fast up until this point. And nothing surprising can happen, and it is so. Uh, smooth, uh, smooth line here by Maren, uh, who now can detach a material. So. Yeah, he can bring the Ben 10, then he has the other. Uh... Yeah. Dried in the graveyard. Yeah. Now he gets it back, of course. Here comes. And yeah. uh, still uh, very solid uh, stuff here from Maren. Uh, I mean. Uh, are you afraid at all of the possibility of an hand trap uh, or I guess you, you don't have the option of playing around no anymore. exactly no but I suppose that if I were Maren uh, considering what I was doing and what I'm doing now during this turn if I have the chance I'd like to push and get rid first of all of the omen and then uh, if he can see that his opponent doesn't have anything else maybe he can try and push some more damage as well because he's still not done yet so he can for sure activate the Ritual spell if he really wants to, but he has have any other uh, Drytron effects monster to activate in the graveyard. So, to resolve other Benten's effect, now I think he's doing just some, uh, you know, calculation. <laughs> if he can seal the game now, it would be great for him, because uh, next turn, uh, Mattia still has three cards in hand and the uh, graveyard is full, so. We'll see. I think he's considering what to add with the Ben 10. Not so sure. Yeah, he's just trying to figure out whether he can push for game uh, going uh, with a really aggressive uh, line or uh, playing it safer with an Herald maybe, but I think he is, doesn't have too many resources, so... Uh, he needs to take a decision and act quickly, because more than 10 minutes have gone and only <laughs> first uh, turn has passed from him. So. You can see Maren thinking very deeply about this decision. That Maybe maybe this decision might change the game, because uh, you, you can see from his face uh, really struggling to add uh, one card or another. Okay. Finally makes up his mind, and uh, now there is no going back. Maybe now I think he wants to push for enough damage. That's yeah, I mean, uh, he doesn't have uh, no. uh, much uh, much time to wait anymore. So he will detach the second material for Fafnir, and now bring back the second Cyber Angel in his graveyard. So... Mattia trying to have a think about it, uh, but yeah, now as expected, uh, uh, we do get the last head. He reads the Natasha very carefully, just in case uh, he's missing out something. But uh, yeah, I mean, very well played by Maren now, so I think we are going to see another link sum. Here comes the Mascarina. Yeah. Just to be sure. And now he keeps going once again, getting back some advantage. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I really like the first part of the turns. Now it's getting a little more confusing on the Maren side, but it seems like some solid Yu Gi Oh! still. Yeah. And as you can see here, he will uh, uh, just be able to uh, equip it. And I don't know, I don't think I... No, because like you can take control of the Omen. Yeah. And uh, this might be enough if you can... Yeah, I think he now goes for the... 
Borrell is thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, it's just counting the starts, I guess. But as you mentioned, and you can see here on screen, uh, uh, you can uh, use the Natasha yeah. to just uh, take control. Well played, man. Yeah, nice, uh, nice uh, Yu-Gi-Oh turn. He was uh, thinking at times a bit much, uh, but I think uh, it is okay. Uh, he just want to make sure that he doesn't mess up. And in the end, uh, his combo was just uh, perfectly smooth to win the game. I gotta say, uh, Mattia's opening was really underwhelming, to be honest. Uh, he had the revolt and the impermanence, uh, but he didn't have anything uh, going on on the monster side of things. Uh, and Maren uh, playing it really well through the Phoenix and Unicorn to force out the revolt. So, well played. And uh, now is Mattia with uh, is back against the wall. Who needs to side in some solutions? What are you thinking now? <laughs> with this side deck, I think that I mean when you play against a deck like this, I think you I mean draw a lock bird is a solution because uh, other than this you have Gamma. But once again, I think Mattia had a kind of slow start, but it was okay anyways because he had the revolt and the impermanence. But it was not enough. So, although he was able to stop two plays from Maren's side, I think he has to side in these cards. Rather than this, I cannot see any other uh, strong card against this. Maybe called by the grave, considering he goes first. Yeah, which is already unusual that he's yeah. not in the main deck, I would say. But um, you're definitely spot on. I guess uh, Maren's side is uh, different. Uh, He's already maining uh, and he's starting to be a trend this week and the cars like Droplet and Talent. So he's not looking uh, too bad going second. But uh, he has quite a few additions uh, and in particular one uh, that surprises me are uh, the free copies of Mystic Mine. Yeah. It would be... Um, I don't know maybe if we will see this in this matchup. Maybe if he goes first game 3 we might uh, see Maren starting Mystic Mine in. Mm -hmm. But going second, actually considering that his deck is very, you know, he's able to deal with problems and as we have seen for game one, yeah, I mean, he could set in the Mystic I mean, I think it's strong, yeah. because if yeah. they go first, the what, are they really gonna keep any no, eight? Especially against Tridron, I think it's perfect in this matchup. Yeah. Especially because no matter what the opening, maybe they can keep the Imperial Order, but yeah. even then... Uh, I think it's your uh, it's not even super obvious that they keep it in, so if that's the case, they only have one out to the Mystic Mine. So I think we could see the Mystic Mine come down, and if that's the case, uh, well, I don't want to be in uh, Mattia's uh, spot, so let's see. Uh, either way, uh, they are trying their, their best to just advance to the top 8, and uh, let's see, so... They are almost ready. Now Mattia will uh, go first for sure, as well. There is no way I think Maren uh, will start things off. But hopefully for Mattia things will be a little bit better as game one, in which he had a slow start, and uh, let's see. Okay, so... Tanky is already a better start. Uh, I doubt we will see any response uh, on this. And uh, in terms of Entrap, uh, Maren, uh, so he was maining uh, the Heralds, uh, but that's it. So he yeah. doesn't play any Entrap uh, in the main deck, uh, and he's siding uh, uh, Ghost Bell and Nibiru mm -hmm. potentially. So full confidence. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, and we see a different uh, opening, La Pesca. <laughs> so he goes and uh, uh, draw a card with the Ferroblade. And we could see the longbow just like we did with uh, the opening from Raphael uh, earlier on today. Yeah. I think differently from... Uh... Oh, okay, there is a response already. And we do see a ghost bell. Hmm. Definitely a bold choice here from Maren. Uh, usually we see the ghost bell uh, old for the revolt. And we'll see if this decision uh, is actually going to be painful for Maren. Maybe just as a second copy of the card, and then it makes sense. But this is definitely an unusual decision. And now we see the Keras putting in some work. Uh, on the other end, we know that outside of the Keras and the Barrage, there are no extenders in the deck. So maybe the risk was worth taking. 
Uh, but now we see the Apollosa revolt. So strong, uh, strong opening by Mattia. Yeah. This is like what we have seen so far uh, from the Tri Brigade players. I think this is like. Uh, if you can also put up the Ancient Warrior Oath, yeah. that's the, the dream. That's the best, but this is uh, very Original, solid. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, as uh, expected, the revolt is face down, and now the play is back on Maren, and... Uh, let's see! Uh, it's definitely tough, even if he has the second Ghost Bell, uh, the Apollosa can just negate it, so... Uh, he really needs one of the side deck cards. The Droplet uh, would be amazing, for yeah. example. So, yeah, if he doesn't have like a uh, droplet or uh, a way to deal with the Apollosa, he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. The revolt as well prevents uh, Maren from getting rid of the Apollosa. <sighs> yeah, he's thinking hard about this, uh, and uh, for now, it seems like he will start with a Drytron uh, uh, end. So, let's see. Mattia goes for it. Let's see if he will negate. Uh, Mm. Oh, okay. So we see a Diviner. So now the Apollosa is 1600. We already see an activation. And this is starting uh, to be a lot of negations uh, already for his opponent. Ah, uh, he has Ash. Wow. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, we don't yeah, yeah. see the targets. <laughs> this was a quick, quick game too. Uh, Maren tried his best, to be fair to win uh, and uh, came back, but I think this opening from Mattia was too much. Uh, and at the end of the day, we could see how the Ghost Bell uh, didn't matter. Even if he kept it, uh, Apollosa would have been there and he didn't even need the revolt. So, very quick game two here, probably the quickest we have seen all day. But uh, it's uh, game three and now we'll see. I think it's the one of the first uh, Rafael uh, had a very quick one in time, but it wasn't really a long game three. But now it will be, again, Maren, who goes first, try to set up his combos and uh, probably not really rely on his side deck, right? No, I mean, uh, we were discussing this before. If, we, if he really wants to make something different, he can set in the Mystic Mine. And he can get an advantage out of this because basically, uh, like any other Dreadron uh, player, is not actually playing trap cards. So that might mean that Mattia wouldn't have like cards such as Twin Twister or Cosmic Cyclone, stuff like this. So it would be not so easy for Mattia to get rid of the Mystic Mind. Yeah. But on the other hand, I don't believe that uh, we will see Maren siding in any other cards, especially because like uh, uh, the Drydron deck is very powerful and consistent. So. Yeah, you really want to combo up. Yeah. Uh, you can't afford, uh, I guess, uh, the Droplet. Yeah. Uh, you side them out, but... Outside of that, I don't think you can side much in. The Twister, maybe. But even the Twisters, I saw some players keeping mm -hmm. them in. So, uh, we'll see. But no matter what, uh, maybe we will actually see this time the Herald combo. Uh, Maren uh, not playing uh, Preparation and instead using the more standard, I guess, the Herald of uh, Ultimateness. So, uh, this, uh, which uh, put in some work uh, because it can uh, actually negate some of the touch cards like Alpha Master of Beasts, which Rafael was siding. And Pancratops, so we'll see. Uh, definitely curious to, uh, whether he will be able to combo off. So, uh, not much more to be said. It will be up to the one of these guys to advance to tomorrow. And for one of them, unfortunately, it will be the last uh, five cards they draw for this weekend. So, and for this format, we should say, as this is the last weekend, we get to see some of these decks, uh, especially the Tri Brigade Zodiac deck uh, at full power, I guess. Okay, so once again, uh, Drytron start from Maren. Yeah, nothing special from Maren. Let's see what uh, his end looks like. Here comes the Ben 10, uh, standard opening from him. Ooh, Ooh but this hurts a lot. Uh, wow. Droll and Lock Bird from Mattia. One of those tech cards that he really specifically had for a bunch of matchups, including this one. Uh, and uh, this is terrible. It's one of the best matchups for this matchup. Yeah, we were seeing this before after uh, Mattia lost uh, game one. Uh, Droll and Lock Bird was definitely the MVP card of the side deck against this type of matchup. And 
Okay, but he has the triple tactics talent. Yeah, at least uh, he can try and make his opponent break. Wow, and there was a gamma to what a end. Droll dropped the 10 gamma and uh, I mean, I guess you need to discard the... Uh, either Kit or Fractal. Yeah, I mean, if he has any way to combo off, but I think with Droll it's quite uh, tough. It's... Probably the Fractal is yeah. the only way. Yeah. Uh, because uh, at least you force them to normal summon the kit and go for Almirage, but that's really slow. So I think there is no option there. But if he feels like he can continue a combo, then maybe the Gamma... But I think you really just uh, discard the Fractal and, uh, and hope that they don't uh, top deck something. Ooh, oh. but it is the Gamma. So Maren uh, confident that he can uh, put up somewhere of a board and even through the droplet. Uh, well, I'm impressed now because uh, he has. To yeah, definitely a bold, bold choice by Maren. This is uh, no game for kids. I think uh, he's thinking uh, he's gonna go all out, uh, risky roll, and uh, yeah, try his best to stay in this. So we'll see. Definitely an interesting decision, uh, and I appreciate this kind of uh, all-in uh, thoughts. Yeah, he's taking the risk and uh, let's see if that will pay off. It's not, of course, uh, an easy decision for Maren, but... Uh... Okay, so he had already the spell. So this uh, changes uh, uh, the dynamic uh, quite a bit, but yeah. Now, making sure he does everything correctly. Uh, imagine just how much advantage you could have got yeah. if the Droll wasn't there, but yeah. He will try to just uh, do as much as he can. And honestly, the pressure is also on Mattia, because uh, if he doesn't close the game, uh, then the grind game is, of course, for the dry turn deck. Mm. Not makes Mascherina. Yeah, Mascherina, oh. and probably yes. that's it. Yeah, makes sense. So, uh, decent stuff from Maren. He knows that the droplet is there, which is my only concern, because now he could go for... Uh, just the Fractal and the usual combo, and if he goes for the Mascherina, you can negate it, yeah. so... At the moment, uh, I'm not too worried, but as I mentioned, uh, he needs to put up a board that the next turn uh, cannot be disrupted because the Ben 10 and the spell are there. Yeah. That means there is a lot of advantage coming back from Maren. So the goal is to a TK here, I think. Yeah, this is the only... I, I think the only card Maren might have, but he doesn't play Disarge Blossom. I mean, Mattia doesn't know it, but... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, here, basically, Mattia... <laughs> can actually push enough and he has the droplet which might save him uh, later on if uh, Maren really wants to activate the Mascarena, so... All effects uh, are going to resolve. Yeah, the top deck is quite relevant. We knew all of the end, which consisted of droplet, the kit uh, and the uh, uh, fractal we just saw. So the fresh uh, drone card could be the difference between an OTK here even from Mattia. Mm. Or a grind game that might actually come and uh, favor Maren. So let's see. I think now you you can normal summon if you really want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now Maren knows that uh, Mattia has a drop, but what else can he do? <laughs> yeah, I mean he's forced to go yeah. for it, uh, and of course uh, Mattia will allow it. Uh, you really want to get back the advantage, and uh, now he can use the droplet. If he feels like, ah, maybe he doesn't like, like, need yeah. to, but... Yeah, he will check the grave, and... Uh, I mean, even if he just droplets discarding the kit from end, uh, we don't know the top deck again, but yeah, it seems fine, so... Really thinking about it... Uh, well. Yeah, I mean, you can consider it, but... Uh... Is there really a reason why not to do it? There is also an interesting play that Mattia could go for, which is uh, uh, going for the Eagle. Mm -hmm. Just shuffle back the Drytrons uh, from the grave. Ah, yes, called. Called by. Yes, called by. So, this is interesting. Okay, he thinks he prefers to keep the kit. Maybe because he wants to go for an OTK. And so he goes cold by and chain okay. the droplet. 
because I believe now the only explanation would be banishing Chu yeah. to get back uh, the longbow and then summoning the kit. And if you go for the eagle, uh, I think uh, that could really work mm -hmm. out. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, as expected, this was the only explanation. He would try to just push for game, and he goes for the longbow, summons the kit. Uh, I cannot see. Okay, yes, Chu back in the graveyard. Um, I has to be on the other zone, but I don't think it's uh, an issue at the moment. But uh... yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Matti, I think he's just trying to figure it out. Uh... If he can push enough damage, as you can see from Maren poster, looks like he knows what is coming. Absolutely, yeah. He's gonna do some calculation. We know that the droplet actually have the attack yeah. of unicorn, so it's something to keep in mind. I mean, I think the goal was uh, like eagle and uh, access code, uh, but now uh, he really needs to be careful about it. So. Uh, now what he can do is uh, actually not uh, super smooth because if he goes already here he needs to commit to the Tri Brigade uh, Link 3. Yeah. Mm. Mattia really taking his time. Uh, he went uh, and... I don't know. Yeah, okay, now they're fixing it as yeah. we were mentioning, but since he used it as material now it doesn't matter anymore. Because the Unicorn was uh, occupying the left zone. No, I think he really needs to be careful because he might seal the game now, <laughs> but uh, he needs to be sure because otherwise, uh, if you don't close the game now, I mean, the game uh, is pretty easy yeah. to be. Gone he, I think he can push enough damage. Yeah, now. it's super yeah. easy. Like even if you go just for uh, the omen afterwards, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you make the access code, uh, for example. Yeah, but I don't know why he's taking so much time uh, to think about it, uh, and maybe the judges will actually give him a penalty for it. Yeah, this is uh, super straightforward. You just go for the Omen here, and uh, it's game uh, pretty easily. So, let's see. Uh, maybe he's uh, just uh, overthinking this a little too much. And he goes to Banish Chu. Okay. Wait. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Mattia really confused here. I don't know. It seems a little confused on what to do, and uh, I mean, I guess he goes for the off then and he doesn't OTK because I'm not understanding uh, this position here. Yeah, he goes for the off. So maybe he didn't see the line to go and uh, OTK, and uh, wow, now he's risking it. He's risking it a lot. <laughs> Especially because, as I mentioned, uh, the Eagle could have been uh, even better if you think about it here. Because the off surely interrupts, but if you go for the eagle, you can shuffle back two dry trends, uh, and uh, leave your opponent uh, in a much weaker spot, maybe. But, I don't know. Kind of a niche uh, player from uh, Matti. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of uh, what he ended up doing. And I think neither is he. Uh, he doesn't look uh, too happy with himself. No, but like when there's the wow. possibility... Oh, and it's even Apollosa now. Apollosa, to top it off, uh, I think Maren is also a little confused on what's going on, but... Uh, definitely not the cleanest of turns, uh, and now plays back to Maren, uh, who has a lot of outs from the top of the deck. Even here, imagine the Mystic Mind yeah. coming down uh, would seal the game, but... Uh, let's see. Uh, definitely, definitely not what we expected. Uh, at the end of the turn, but I think he just passed back to Mattia. Mattia doesn't pick up uh, any monster to win the game, and now there is uh, probably one more turn, Ooh. and there is an emergency picked up. Okay, so... Uh, what a weird game. Again, game three, we are seeing a lot of weird things this weekend. Uh, there was a g weird game two between Rafael and his opponent, and now again with Mattia and Maren, uh, who... I guess uh, add the chance to seal the deal and uh, he's taking an unnecessary risk here. So let's see if we will pay off uh, or uh, if Maren will be able to advance to the top 8. Now Mattia didn't even activate the card, so does he have an Ash Blossom? Okay, yes. Now 
Ok, so Ash Blossom on the Cyber Emergency, Maren set a monster, which might let me think that uh, he's just uh, left with nothing. Uh, and yeah. now, if Mattia picks up monster, uh, it's easy. Yeah. To win, and what does he do? Oh, Ooh, the barrage. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, game over. And unfortunately, Maren, uh, after uh, what was a very interesting game, uh, couldn't uh, do anything to come back. Definitely not the match we expected and definitely not the game we expected, but congratulations to Mattia. And once again, it seems like Italians are just uh, unstoppable uh, lately. So the third in a row to advance to the top eight today. Let's go back to us for the post-match discussion.